Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the rank sum test. Previously, we discussed an example using uh, the miles per gallon for American versus Japanese cars, and we used a t test. That t test uh, had an assumption of a normal distribution for each of the populations of cars, that is, the American cars and the Japanese cars. Both had a normal distribution, uh, they have the same variance and they have possibly different means. Those are the assumptions under the t-test. And so we are now considering what would happen if we wanted to try relaxing those assumptions, or if we thought that maybe normality was not appropriate. So to take a quick look at whether we thought normality would be appropriate, here's the data where it's just been rescaled so that the, for comparison with these bell curves. So here are the bell curves that are the best fitting bell curves, these are the normal probability density functions uh, for the Japanese and the American cars. So there's a blue curve for the blue histogram and a red curve for the red histogram and ideally what you would see is that the data look somewhat similar to these uh, bell curves. And these data really don't look that similar. We'll talk later about other ways to evaluate uh, how close is sort of close enough uh, to normality, but these don't look particularly uh, normal. So if we wanted to relax that assumption and not use a uh, normality assumption, we could do this two-sample comparison using the rank sum test. This rank sum test is also referred to as the Wilcoxon rank sum test and also the Mann-Whitney U test. And here's the procedure. The procedure is to transform the data into ranks. So you take all the miles per gallon and you just create uh, the lowest one and gets a value of 1, the next lowest one gets a value of 2, all the way up to the top one which gets however many observations there are. Uh, on the next slide I'm going to be going through a simple example to show what this means. But the idea here is that every observation you have, so every car in the data set now has a rank associated with it. Then you're going to take the group that has the smaller sample size and you're going to calculate this statistic u and it's just the sum of those ranks for that group. All right, so go ahead and do that. Take the sum of the ranks for the group with the smaller sample size. You're going to then calculate what we expect to see in that group, which it depends on the sample size of that group, as well as the average ranks. So you just take the product of the sample size and the average rank, and that gives you what we would expect to see for you if the null hypothesis was true. That is, that there's no difference in miles per gallon between American and Japanese cars. The next step is to calculate the standard deviation of the statistic u. And this is given by this formula right here, where n2 now is the sample size of the larger group, right? n1 was the first group, and n2 is the other group. And sr is just the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation of the ranks. Once you have these three quantities, you can then calculate our test statistic called z which is this formula right here, which is basically u minus what we would expect to see divided by the standard deviation of u. This is normalizing onto a standard normal scale, but we have this additional factor here of c. This is the continuity correction. Uh, I'm not going to go, in order to make this lecture brief, I'm not going to go into detail about the continuity correction, but I'll leave a link to a video that talks about the continuity correction. Basically, pragmatically, well, Basically, the continuity correction is either adding 0.5 or subtracting 0.5, and pragmatically, what we can do is just try both and choose the one that leads to the larger p-value, and that will get us what we need. All right, and then finally what we do is we find this, the p-value using a standard normal distribution and depending on what our hypothesis setup was. All right, so let's uh, look at this uh, being performed on a subset of the data that we were looking at. So this is just randomly selected uh, miles per gallon and country, um, nine observations. And so we take the, uh, the data, and the easiest way to do is just to sort the data by the miles per gallon. So we have the smallest miles per gallon in these nine observations here, and the largest miles per gallon down here. All right, and so then we keep the country that's associated with that observation, and then we put in the ranks. So what we would do, since there are nine observations, is we would write down the numbers one to nine. The only problem here is that we have a tie. 
So these two vehicles have the same miles per gallon, that is miles per gallon of 26. And so instead of writing down six, uh, 5 and 6, instead of writing down 5 and 6 here, we take their average and use that. So for any ties that we have in our data set, we just take the average rank and we give that to all of the observations that are tied. Alright, so then the first step in calculating the test statistic is to take uh, the Japanese cars, because there's only three Japanese cars, so it's the group with the smaller sample size, and we add together uh, it, their ranks. So it's uh, 9 plus 8 plus 5.5, which should be 22.5. Then we find the expected value of u, which is just uh, 3 times the average rank. That turns out the average rank is here is 5, so 3 times 5 is 15. And then we calculate the standard deviation of u. We calculate the standard deviation of u, which is just the uh, standard deviation of the ranks uh, times that square root of the function of the sample sizes. The next step is to calculate the z-statistic. The z-statistic now is using this continuity correction. The continuity correction here was uh, minus 0.5, was the appropriate one to use. All right, and finally, we can calculate the p-value, again, using a standard normal table. And this p-value ends up being 0.07. All right, so this is just an example of the rank sum test on a small data set. What we actually want to do is do this rank sum test on the full data set. So here's just a quick visualization of what's going to go on when we try to transform the data that we have into ranks. So we plotted all the data as on uh, the x-axis, the miles per gallon for the cars, on the y-axis, the ranks, and then we've color-coded the observations by whether they are a U.S. car or a Japanese car. All right, so what we can see with these stripe, these vertical lines is that these are the locations where there are ties. All right, so all the cars right here at a miles per gallon of uh, 18. And when we transformed all those miles per, those cars that have miles per gallon equal to 18 into ranks, we'll use the average of all the ranks of the cars in this uh, set right here. So that's going to be something like 110. So one of the issues here is that there are lots of ties in this data set, uh, but it still seems pretty clear that what we see in this picture is lots of red down here and lots of black up here. Right, so it certainly seems that the Japanese cars, which have uh, seemingly higher miles per gallon, right, that corresponds to having a higher rank. Okay, so uh, we're not going to do this one by hand, but instead we're going to use some software to perform the analysis for us. And here's the way to do it in SAS. Again, the data step reads in the data. And this PROC NPAR one way with this Wilcoxon option runs the uh, rank sum test. The output looks like this. And the relevant one for us right here is the Wilcoxon two-sample test with the Z, the normal approximation, and we have a two-sided hypothesis here. So the probability, the p-value is less than 0 0.0001. Right, and uh, uh, SAS goes ahead and tells us that it did include this continuity correction. Okay, so if we wanted to make a statistical conclusion, we would say something like, uh, average miles per gallon of Japanese cars are significantly different than average miles per gallon of American cars by the Wilcoxon rank sum test with a p-value less than 0 0.0001.